Hey, so how are you doing? Um, this is a quick little format guide to formatting APA in um, APA format in Google Docs. And here's some good news for you. APA has changed their format so they don't have this confusing different headers on, on your first page and following pages, blah, blah, blah. They've simplified it. So let's just get started so we can get done. All right. Um, what's it going to have on it? Well, and I'll link this in the video. It's going to have um, the title of the paper, author, of course, that would be you, affiliation, your university or college, course name and number, instructor name, assignment due date, um, and notice you spell out the month, um, and then header with the page number, and that's all. So APA says, I mean, they say if your instructor says do it differently, do it that way. But they say if your instructor doesn't say this is the way you do it. So that's what I'm going with. So for my classes, I expect you to do this. This will be the standard basic APA layout. If your instructor wants something different, then do what they say. Um, and so what does it look like? It looks like this. You have the title. This is in bold. Here's page number, simple header page number, your name, department, affiliation. You know, in, in El Paso Community College, instead of calling them departments, Department of English, Department of History, they call it the uh, English discipline, um, in, you know, history discipline, so discipline, um, English discipline, and then El Paso Community College. Um, the course, of course, the uh, instructor and date. And that's it. That's the title page. So let's give this a try, Google Docs. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click right up here and get that header open. You can also click and, um, you know, insert header, right? And so just don't click that. Leave that plain. We're going to move this right over here and just insert page numbers, right? And so there it is right up there. Make sure this is in 12. Okay, notice that it put it in 12. Whatever your font you're using in your paper, make sure you, you do it there. So if you change your font in your paper, make sure you go up there and change it. Like, that's one of the things, and I know, it's just a page number. You're going to be like, how can you tell? Well, one, that's a sans serif font, and Times New Roman is a serif font. This is my business, okay? So that's me as an English teacher. Um, other teachers, well, the nursing teachers, if you're going into nursing, they're really picky. Half of them, more than half of them, will notice, okay? Other teachers, well, how did your teachers get where they are? They wrote a ton of papers. They didn't just take tests and do projects. They did that. To write that pot project, you got to write it up. You know, so they wrote a lot of papers. They know the tricks, too. We were all students just like you. Yeah, we didn't like writing papers either, even as an English teacher. I didn't, an English major. So come correct with it. Okay, so we're going to make sure it's 12 font, point font. I'm going to leave it in Arial. Um, Emma, I mean, you know, this one, APA used to require um, Times New Roman, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to double check a couple of things real quick. Paragraph styles. Um, align and indent. I want to double check my, um, not indent, but line. I want to make sure it's double. Okay. And then under, um, what, um, oh, format uh, my uh, line spacing. I want to make sure that it says add, not do, do not add. Because if it says add, it means it's not there. So really, that's all I have to do with um, Google Docs. All right, I'm going to center. Oh, control E doesn't work in Google Docs. Okay, so I'm going to center and I'm going to put it in bold and I'm going to actually come down. Tw I hit the return twice and put in uh, my spiffy title. Oh man, I just noticed something. And then my cool subtitle. All right, you don't have to have a subtitle. Um, but you can often academic papers do. What I noticed was, look, my font size all. So let's take everything to 12 point font. Okay. Here, I'm going to make sure and turn off my bold. The only thing that's going to be in bold in your paper is your title here. And then on the next page where your essay starts. If you're putting bold anywhere else, well, if you've got headings. But if it's not like title or subheadings, don't do it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to enter once, enter twice. That's all you do, isn't it nice? Okay, so I've scooted this down by entering twice, and then I'm going to put the rest of the stuff. 
You put your name, great, student, name, there we go. And then we're going to have, what are we going to have next? I forget, I forget. We're going to have, oh, here we want English Discipline, El Paso Community College, and then the course. So, English, this, let's see if I can spell it. P-L-I-L-I-O, -I 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 comma, L, Paso Community College, and then what was it, what was it, what was it, what was it, course, course, see, I'm still learning, in, oh, and it's the English, so 1301, if you're in 1302, put that, 2311, whatever it is, um, composition. If you are not sure what the full title of your course is, hey, it's just like English 1301, that's what I'm taking, right? Then go to your syllabus that your teacher handed you at the beginning of the semester, or you can go log into My EPCC and go to Services. And when you scroll down on the right-hand side, there is a link to Syllabus Part 2. That's the official part. And so you can just put in, hey, oh, English uh, 1301 and then search and that'll bring up the official syllabus and that's where you'll see right here here's the course rubric and number rubric, that's weird. Um, composition one course title so that's your title right there okay um, the next thing you're going to need after that is um, your instructor's name and make sure that you spell that correctly Professor Kelly Wood, and put it how they have it. Like, I typically always put my middle initial in, in there, okay? Um, Double-check spelling. Everybody notices when their name's spelled wrong. You don't want that to be the first. And they're going to notice it. So you don't want that to be the first thing they notice about your paper is that you didn't even take out the syllabus to check their name. And so on your um, syllabus from your instructor, where it has his or her policies, that's where you'll have, you'll have see their name double check it. If they're a doctor, put doctor in there. Um, if they have any other kind of accolade they go by. Um, otherwise, professor, instructor would work fine. So you put that in there. And then the next thing we're going to have, I do believe, is the date. So again, no slash dates. Um, August. What's the date? Today's just going to go with today, 17, 2020. What else can 2020 throw at us? Um, so there we go. Date, just like that. And then all I'm going to do is I'm pressing Control Enter, and I can go in and I'm going to put my title, and this is the page I'm going to start my essay on. So I've got page two. Now um, I'll put my title, and then again I'm going to make sure and turn off my bold, and then I would tab to begin my paragraphs, and I will write my lovely, fine, great essay. Okay. Um, now, as I'm going along, I may find, it depends on the assignment, that I need to cite something. If I'm citing something, and there I press Control, um, Enter again, I'm going to have a references page. I always spell it wrong, but I did good that time, and I'm going to center this because it's a title, but I'm not going to put it in bold, okay? APA is weird. And then, of course, whenever I have a reference, I will look up, according to the APA rules, how to do it and type it in there. Now, I do have to um, format it with a hanging indent. So, um, no, I didn't want to find. I just wanted to enter and paste. So, if I have my references, and, and one of the benefits of going ahead, if you are going to have, and let me make this smaller. So, if you are going to have um, references, you see what I would do is I would format this page, so and then just boom, put in control enter and go ahead and put references, and that way as you're going along and you're typing and you're you know doing your work, you're writing your great essay and you're like, hey, I used a source, I've got to remember to cite that, then you just scroll down here and cite that source. When you're all done, only enter when you're at this end of the source, and then you can put in your next one. Remember, it's going to be alphabetical according to whatever's first over here. So if I come and put in another one, and I'm like, oh, that one would go right here, um, I can put it in there. And then I'm just going to highlight it all. Uh, let me go back to um, bigger. And 
I've got it all highlighted. I have a format, and it's a paragraph that I'm formatting. Wait, I'm formatting the align and indent on it, indentation options, and look, special, hanging. And I'm just say apply. And that gives me that hanging indent so that it's easier to see, you know, um, what these start with, which one they are. If you go ahead and do that, oh, it didn't transfer over. I thought it would. It does with Word. So here you'll have to go back to Format, Align and Indent, Indentation Options, Special, Hanging, Apply. Okay? So um, what you'll end up with is you'll always have at least two pages in any APA paper because you'll have your title page, unless otherwise instructed. And then, of course, if you're just doing a one-page response or something with no citations, you would have your page of text. And then if you're doing anything with references, you'll have your references page. Um, so um, that's how they're set up. Notice we don't have any extra space between paragraphs. It's just plain old double space. And it's very, very, here, let's take a look at, um, oh, sample paper. You can see it's just very, very plain looking. Okay, so it's, it's all plain vanilla. It's about your ideas, not your um, format. I mean, it is about your format, but it's about your ideas, not fancy fonts. So um, one other thing to remember, I'm sure it was vitally important. I said it in the word video, page length. If an instructor asks you to write one page, it's about depth of thought. That's a little bit of thinking. Two pages, a little more. Three pages, so, you know, don't forget that. And the thing is, is your um, title page and your references page, those don't count towards your page length. So when somebody says page length, they mean pages of your writing, okay? And remember to think about it in that way, to think about it as not as, oh, my God, this is so long. Think about it as, okay, let me do depth of thought. And the nice thing to know is as you write longer, more often you're asked to use more sources, so... You don't have to come up with all the words. You get some help. You just want to make sure you give people credit by citing them. So um, I hope that was helpful, and let me know if you have questions. Otherwise, happy formatting.